This is a video about how to use a Pro Cut brake lathe. So it has a power cord that you could plug into the wall. It just takes 110. So you got to have an electrical socket nearby. It's adjustable uh, height wise. Okay. So you can adjust the height up and down. You can actually tilt the machine. So there's a lock right here, an orange lever. You could tilt this machine uh, one way or the other way and then you lock it in. Okay. Uh, so it also pivots. So it has a not only the up and down, but a pivot. So you could go up and down, you could pivot, and you could uh, twist it to match the different vehicles that are out that are available for us to use this on. Uh, there's adapters on the bottom. These adapters are, are to fit different hubs. So there's about eight of these. This is like a truck one. Okay, so this one is for a four lug uh, vehicle. Uh, this fits a hub. And this is a five lug uh, rotor with a hub as uh, that's integral so you find the right adapter and then you cinch it down with lug nuts you could use the lug nuts of the car but the actual pro cut comes with a complete set uh, to attach this uh, um, adapter so uh, I usually just use three lug nuts okay uh, you can use more than that and then you're gonna lock it down hand tight with a wrench so I'm just gonna model one right here then I want to take a wrench and then it's just going to be hand tight. Never use anything but a wrench to tighten that. I would do all three and after you do all three then you would take this machine and you would tilt it, raise it depending on what you need to do and then you would screw this into the machine using this uh, screw right here. Now the one thing I have to really emphasize is you could easily strip the threads on the screw or the adapter so this pin right here needs to make sure that goes all the way inside like that it can't be tilted it has to go all the way in flush it has to be completely flush and then it should not take any effort at all to attach this rotor to the machine have three different adjustments for our cutting bits okay so this is an adjustment right here to allow us to slide this back and forth okay so uh, we can lock it so I would center this over the rotor I would lock it down and then this is a, a, a lock to after you adjust the bit so I could bring these bits in closer and then lock it into place. This is where you bring in the rotor. Okay, you can bring it in, you can bring it out, but you got to pull on the knob. Okay, so the knob has to be pulled out, and then you could adjust it. So I'm going to bring it right to the edge, and then I would bring these bits down just to where they start to hit. Okay, and turn the machine on, get it calibrated, and then you would go and touch the rotor and then bring these bits all the way into the inside of the rotor as far as you can without bottoming them out. There's a little adapter right here next to the bits and that adapter is meant to where you when you bring this in you don't want to ever bottom the bit out against the rotor so this is supposed to hit to warn you that you're about ready to bottom out on what we call the hat of the rotor. Okay. So I would go right about there. I would prop. I would go and adjust my bits. Usually I go uh, uh, three notches, which is uh, 0 0.0075. So each notch is equal to two and a half thousandths. So I would take these and I would spin them three notches, lock it down, put on my pad, my silencing pad. And there's little grooves right here that go over the bit uh, to uh, um, lock it in place, that little knob. That's what these are for right here, okay? So I put this on, get that on there, and then the last thing would be to engage it is all, if this machine's spinning, is you just pop that and then this would start to cut. So there's two bits uh, that cut 
both sides of the rotor. Always check the tip of these bits to make sure they're not chipped. There's three edges to these bits. So I'm gonna take this out. This is, by the way, one of the uh, tools that are in the tool kit. So there's one other kit that we have here uh, to service this uh, machine. So this bit right here, if you look at it, it has dots. So there's three dots, there's two dots, there's one dot. It was on the one dot side. So I wanna get a new edge. So I'm gonna move it to the two dots. And I want to, because this is a real person's car that we're going to be uh, work using. So I want to make sure I change the bit to a new edge that hasn't been used. Okay. And I'm just going to tighten that down. And you not, you don't want to do it tight, uh, 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 really tight. Just snug, and you're good. We got our tools, got our uh, Pro Cut machine out. We're working on a 2006 Toyota Sienna with a 3.3 liter automatic trans. Uh, so let's get started. So I'm going to raise it so I'm equal to a forklift height because I don't want to use my back. And I should be able to pull that tire right out. Perfect. Okay. So now I'm going to lower it down on the lock, on the lock right here. And I go in and everything is work with a straight back. We're ready to take our lug nuts off. I'm going to use a half inch impact gun. I'm going to use an extension on this. I'm going to line my dot up with the flat side of the impact gun because it will go on easier that way. Then I have choices. I have a metric uh, a flip socket. So it's a 17 and a 19. And then I have a 21 and a uh, 22 and a 21, and then it goes to American. This car was built in Japan, so the only two right choices are these two. So I'm going to grab this, and I'm going to see which one fits the best. This one's way too loose. That's on the 22 millimeter right there. So I'm going to flip it, and I'm going to put it on there. Much better. Put that on my sock. That socket onto my gun. Lock it into place with the with the air coupling. Make sure I'm going the right way with the trigger. Put your uh, gun on. Put your hand on top. And back these lug nuts off. Always stick the lug nuts someplace where they're out of the way and you're not going to lose them. I prefer to, that everything stays with the car. So I don't like it when students put the, the bolts in the cart. I like them with the car. Straight back. Get that tire out of the way because we're going to need to work. So here's our rotor. Uh, it wasn't really making any noise. Uh, no pulsation. So I don't have run out. I don't have, it is a little glazed, but it wasn't squeaking. Uh, let's measure the pads when we take them out to see what they are. He just wants to do this because he's going to be driving across country and he wants new pads on. So there's really no reason other than just regular maintenance. Okay, so we have our caliper we got to uh, take off first. So there's two bolts that hold the caliper on. It's a 14 millimeter on the top and a 14 millimeter on the bottom. Okay, if you're using a wrench, use the box end to put it on and break it free. And then use the open end to, for speed. Never loosen, uh, break something free with the open end, only the box end. But this is not my best choice. And a really bad choice would be to use a quarter inch ratchet. Uh, uh, it's just too small. I mean, you could put this on, it fits. You know, make sure you're going the right way. Make sure it fits, but you, you can't get any leverage. So uh, this would probably be my worst choice. You could use a ratchet with a shallow socket, and uh, this is a 3 8 ratchet, so you could use a 3 8 ratchet. With you have, a, have the 14 millimeter socket on this, and then you could pull it off, uh, get the bolts off with the 3 8 ratchet and the shallow socket. Uh, this is fine. So the one I would not use is the quarter inch drive. You could use a wrench. You could use the ratchet with a shallow socket. You could even put a deep socket on that ratchet as well my choice is to use an air ratchet with a 14 millimeter deep socket it's all about speed, okay so now i get the, the air hooked up get it going the right way and then i put that on my bolt and you, 
it's already loose now you don't want no matter what tool you use you don't want to pull that bolt out until you do the other bolt you need this bolt in here otherwise the caliper is going to move so now i'll go to the bottom one and it's okay to pull this one out. so i can pull this bolt out now i can do this one and it keeps the caliper from moving when you take the bottom bolt out uh, when I take the caliper off, you want to hang it with a bungee cord. So I'm going to take this and move it out of the way. And then I'm going to hang this up here, up high, because we're using the on-car lathe. And I want this to be out of the way as much as possible, okay? Because this is going to be turning. All right, so now we've got their pads, pull our pads off. We're going to look for any cracking any abnormal uh, abnormal wear doesn't look like it uh, we can measure the pads actually so we have our, our pad measure um, so let's see where we're at so we're on yellow okay i teach that these are 5,000 mile increments so need breaks right now 5 10 15 they could probably gotten 20,000 miles out of these pads um in in been fine keeping them but they didn't want to change them the other thing we need to keep aware of is if these pads are wearing on an angle because if these pads from this side to this side are tapered or on an angle it means these pins here aren't sliding okay so here's a here's a sliding pin right here and let's check the bottom one you always want to check these so they're sliding perfect so I'm okay with this. We'll still grease these up, but these pins were working properly. That's why our pads are wearing evenly. So the best thing with bolts, remember these are specialized bolts just for brakes. I like to screw them back in so you don't lose them. So I screw them back in two or three turns. Okay? And that way there's not a chance to lose them. Now there's another bolt we need to do, which is the inner uh, bracket bolt, the mounting bracket bolt. So there's two 17 millimeters, and let's get those off. All right, so we have our 17 millimeter deep. The one thing, why do I grab a deep socket versus a shallow socket? It gives you something to hold on to as you're trying to manipulate the tool. If it's a shallow socket, there's not a lot for you to grab. So I'm gonna put this on to the bottom bolt, get that going, I'm gonna break it free. Now I'm not going to take it off until I do the top bolt. Get that going. Now I can take these bolts. There's one. Two. And then I'm going to immediately take these bolts out and I'm going to screw them into my bracket so I that way I don't stand a chance of losing these bolts like i say brake bolts are specialized they take a special bolt so i have two 17s that hold the bracket on and i have two 14s that hold the caliper on i'm gonna first before i lower the car down i'm gonna attach my uh, hub to my rotor so i'm gonna find it and then this is slotted so I'm going to go as tight as I can. So I'm actually going to twist this. And then I found the lug nuts that I need for my lug nut kit. So here's the two or the three that I need. And I'm going to put this on. Run these down as far as I can by hand. And then, like I said earlier, you only want to use a wrench. Tight these. So I'm going to take my wrench and I'm just going to go hand tight on all these lug nuts. And I'm, I'm going to kind of turn them, I'm not going to tighten one down all the way, I'm going to bring them down to stages. Okay. And then I want to let it land on the locks, you do not want it <coughs> off the locks like this because the car has a tendency to bounce lower it down on the locks and it should be about waist height. Okay, we're ready to attach, uh, attach this to the car. Uh, there's two handles here. I'm going to bring that right up. There's a handle also back here so we could, we could actually raise it up and push it down. 
And then this isn't going all the way flush, so take a uh, zoom on this. So it's not. So then you need to rotate this till it flushes up, and then you run this down. Okay. Now I think I can need to lower this down uh, one more lock because I'm all the way extended. So don't force things. Reposition the lift if you need to, and run better. So now I can lower this down. It goes in. You want to eliminate any any gaps in here, and then look how easy this is to spin in. Okay, you never want to force this uh, knob or the screw into the hub. Should be real easy. We could go ahead and bring our bits in now to our rotor. I'm going to bring it pretty close, and then I'm going to center the bit. So I'm going to loosen this little lever right here. And then I'm going to center this over my rotor. And then it looks like I need to bring my bits out. So I'm going to loosen the lock and I'm going to bring that bit out. Bring the other bit out. There we go. Now I can bring this down. And center this over my rotor. There we go. So it's kind of nice to leave this loose until you get the bits kind of centered. Then lock everything down. Okay, we got this uh, ready to go. Last step to set the machine up. I'm gonna you need, when you plug it in, you'll say it'll say ready. The light will flash. You want to turn the machine on. Before you do that, make sure that this lock right here that allows you to just pivot it. And I'm gonna hold. I'm actually not gonna machine this way. I'm gonna machine flat. I'm gonna lock that down. Then I could turn this on. The car is in neutral because the car is in neutral. It's easy to spin. Okay. And then after you hit get it spinning, you gotta hit start. And it's gonna ratchet and adjust the mechanisms right here. And it's actually gonna level the machine out to the car. And the number we wanna see is 0.8 or less. So when it finishes, it needs to be 0.8 or less. We're good to go. All right, so when I turned the machine on, the automatic feed was engaged. So because this is engaged, this bit is actually pulling away from the rotor. I want to put it in neutral. So I'm going to actually pull this knob all the way out and twist it. It's still going to spin, but it's not fully engaged. So this, uh, this whole cutting assembly is not moving. The other thing to keep in mind is there's a bouncing motion to the machine. That's normal. This thing is supposed to bounce and move Another reason for the bouncing and the movement of the whole assembly is when the bit is cutting across this rotor, that creates a non-directional finish by the bits actually moving, kind of like in a little like semi-circle or a uh, uh, oval pattern. So this is so it's not like a record player; it creates a non-directional finish. All right, let's start cutting. So I'm gonna uh, go ahead and bring my my bits in. I'm gonna go just inside the outer ridge right here, and then I'm gonna loosen my cutter right here. My, my or sorry, I'm gonna loosen my lock for my cutting bits, and then I'm gonna run the inside one down to right here, just touch. There we go. Now I'll run the outside bit until it just touches. Perfect. I'm gonna lock this down, and then I I prefer to take off the outer edge and then the inner edge. ProCut says you don't have to do that, so I'm gonna manually turn the cutting bit and take off that outer edge, and then I'm gonna run it all the way down and take off that inner edge. Now, what I'm curious is, as I bring it in, if it starts to get thicker as I go in, because rotors tend to get thinner on the outside edge. So if that's the case, then I'm going to back those bits off if it, it seems like it. So this is telling me right now that rotor was completely flat. There was no high spot. It looks pretty even all the way down. But there's a lot of times where I start to cut into the rotor and it's telling me I have a high spot in the inside. Okay. I'm going to go all the way in until I get to the, uh, to the edge. There we go. And I heard the inside edge clear too. So you heard it stop cutting. Perfect. Loosen the lock nut. 
I'm going to go three notches with my cutter, okay? So I'm going to turn it uh, one, two, three, which is equal to seven and a half thousandths. Again, on this side, one, two, three. I'm going to lock this down. Make sure this is locked. This is locked. Make sure my, uh, my uh, lever here is locked. And then all I have to do to engage it is hit the button. But before I do that, I need to put on my, my uh, silencing pads. So I'm going to clip these on right here. And then all I got to do is put that on and it will start the machine. Take this out, put it in neutral. Uh, this popped off when it finished, so make sure you hang this where it's supposed to go. Uh, I did want to talk about the automatic shutoff. Okay, this is supposed to go onto this right here, and then what it does, it hits this little button and it cuts the machine off. Okay, uh, I don't use this for one reason. I don't want my students walking away from the machine. This would be used for a professional mechanic who sets this machining and then goes and does something else as it's machining. The rule of thumb for a high school program, don't walk away from anything that's machining. You need to stay here, you need to monitor it, and you need to turn it off if something happens. So I will never let my students use the automatic shutoff feature because I don't want you walking away from the machine. Okay, the machine naturally does a non-directional finish, but I still like to slightly hit the rotor so I take a piece of emery cloth and I just slightly scuff up that rotor and you can see it changing the pattern, okay? All you want to do is change that pattern to a non-directional finish. You could technically skip this step with a, with a uh, Pro Cut brake lid because it puts that pattern in naturally. This just does a better job. Uh, one thing that a non-directional finish is known for, it prevents any kind of tweaking as the pads are uh, breaking in. And the other thing is, uh, if it's a, a record player-like pattern where it's circular, the pads on uh, some cars will actually follow that pattern and then click back in, and it creates like a slight clicking sound. So you want to always put like a non-directional finish on it. I'm going to go ahead and disconnect this machine. So I'm going to turn the power off, okay? And I'm going to go ahead and loosen this knob right here. Spin that. It should not have to take any effort. And then I uh, gradually pull this off. You don't want to take a chance at hitting the bits on the rotor. So I made sure my uh, bits were way away from the rotor as I pulled this off. And then the last step's going to be, you, there's still some brake dust on here. And I want to go ahead and clean this with just a little bit of brake clean, not much. Okay? We're done. We're at the solvent tank. Uh, I'm going to clean the mounting bracket and I'm going to clean the little uh, clips that are uh, hold the, uh, the pads in place. Uh, the new pads did not come with new clips, but it did come with the grease for the pins. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and clean this whole bracket inside the solvent tank. The solvent tank is kind of warm. So you could use the gloves like I am using, or a pair of throwaway gloves, okay? And I'm just going to take all that old brake dust and take it off. It doesn't take a lot of effort to get that off. And then I'm going to go ahead and clean my clips right here. Make sure they're nice and clean. And we're going to put a little bit of grease on these clips when we put it back together. Not a lot. But we want these as clean as possible. Both clips. I'm gonna pull these uh, uh, sliding pins out. Okay, and I'm gonna clean these one at a time. 
here's one. Okay, tip that right there, and then I'm gonna clean the other one. Now the one thing I want to make sure you understand is the pins are specialized. One has a, like an alignment type of a rubber uh, grommet, the other one does not. So they need to go back in the same hole. That's why I'm keeping care, being real careful where I put them. Now since we have the machine off, I go ahead and take off my uh, mounting bracket. When you take this off, I want you to put it right back on the machine where it goes. And then for the lug nuts, I want you to put these right back inside the kit where they go. Okay. And the kits actually go into this recess, there's a section right here on the machine where they fit right inside here. Okay. Well, we have our new pads that the, it's a Bosch. So Bosch is a good brand. Uh, it comes with the lubrication packet and it says apply to any moving hardware. Also uh, apply to the contact surface of the pad. We're not going to use that. We're actually going to use the disc brake quiet from CRC on the back of the pad. So tear this open okay so any place where the pads move or any moving part is where you're going to get this grease on so I'm going to actually put this right on side on the, the pin here you don't need a lot okay and then I'm going to insert that right into the slide right here and that thing is moving great again put this on the other one you remember there's a uh, they, there's a specific slot for each or hole for each one of these because they're different type of pins. Okay, and I'll put that in there and then this one. That moves nice. Okay, I have the clips that I talked about. So you want to put a little bit of uh, uh, grease, not a lot, right where the pad's going to slide. Okay, let me go ahead and grab my other pin, uh, clip. I'm going to install that clip. These clips uh, keep the pads tight in the bracket. And so uh, they're really important. They're not a throwaway item. They are, are, are a vital part of the braking system. So after you get that in, then you're going to take a little bit more of this grease. Not a lot, because you don't want to contaminate your brake system with grease. And I'm going to stick that right on top of there like that. Okay. So the mounting bracket's all done. Now let's do the pads. So I have two pads here. Uh, they don't have an anti-rattle uh, clip on it, so you could use either pad on the inside or outside. But I matched it up to the old pad because what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to actually copy that same pattern. So that's right where that uh, pad is contacted. So that's going to be my inboard pad where the piston goes. And then I have two outer edges here. So right here and right here and that's going to be the other place where I put this and what this does it creates any possibility of a noise where the pad is uh, has contact with the caliper okay so you don't want a lot just enough to keep the contact points uh, protected from any squeaks rattles whatever the noise is all right we're ready to put on our uh, mounting bracket so I'm going to take the bolts out I'm going to make sure I don't touch that rotor because you want to keep the surfaces as clean as possible. And I do have some grease on my hand. So I'm going to line up that hole. Always move the bracket around. Don't force any bolt. Okay. And they should start pretty easily. There we go. And you want to start at three to four turns. Again, three to four turns, wiggling that bracket. Get, this, uh, get the bolt started properly. Don't ever force these. Got my air rack. Make sure I'm going the right way. So here's our caliper. Here's our pads. The, the pad right here is the inboard pad that goes against the piston. This is our outboard pad that goes against the outer part of the caliper. So inboard goes in here. Keep in mind, students flip these around. And I've had it where they put the pad facing out. The pad is this side with the, with the wear 
uh, line in here. So the metal backing must be facing out. You insert this right here, get it going into the, the clip right there. All right, so I can't get that inner pad in. So it, since I can't get that inner pad in, I'm gonna put the outer pad on first. And sometimes that lines everything up to make it go together easier. So let's see. So the reason why it was fighting me is I had to push this up into the clip. And once when I pushed it up into the clip, I could get the bottom one to go in nice and easy. So now these two pads are seated properly. One of the tools I didn't go over at the beginning is the Pro Cut Breakway comes with these little hooks. These little hooks are so you can hang your caliper. Uh, I've trained my students to just use a bungee cord, but that's what these hooks are for. So I'm going to take the caliper off now. Okay. Put that bungee cord away. And then I want to use a little bit of brake clean. Spray it on a rig. And I want to clean the mating surfaces of where the pad's gonna hit. So the pad's gonna hit the piston right here, and it's gonna hit out here, and I'm gonna clean that up. And if you feel any residue from the previous pads, which I do right there, you wanna get that all clean and off. You don't want any old residue uh, from the previous brake job. All right, so here's the caliper. This is the piston to the caliper right here. Uh, this is out because the old pads were worn. So we need to push those this piston all the way down into the board and make room for the thicker pads. There's a couple tools to use. So this is a tool that a lot of my students like to use. It works like a uh, just a uh, caulking gun, and you put that in there. And you just pump it, and it pushes that piston, in and it works really well. You release it from here, and then you bring the jaw in and that pushes the piston in. This is a new tool we got this year. You insert this in, flick it the right direction, and you just ratchet this. Really cool tool on how to uh, push a caliper piston in, and you could actually see the caliper piston going in nice and easy with this tool, just by the ratcheting. When you're done, flick the tool, and then you just bring those, and you can bring that out. Okay, so my way is uh, that I teach all my high school students is you take two wrenches and you take the box in and they need to be a really large wrench like a 22 and a 24 and you're going to take one and flip it over. You're going to stick it inside with the pads inside there and then all you have to do is push and pull and you can push that piston in. And it works every time. It works for all calipers. And there you go. That piston, in. that piston is now all the way inside. You didn't need to have an expensive tool. You just needed to have a set of wrenches. You take the box in, you flip one upside down, you put the old pads in, and you just pry. It works really good if you have uh, a four piston caliper where there's two pistons on each side. You put uh, pressure on all four pistons at the same time. Uh, works really well. Now since we have the piston pushed all the way into the caliper bore, we could go ahead and take these uh, sliding pin screws off. And the last thing that's left is to mount this caliper. And I'm gonna uh, take it, I'm not gonna, now here's why I wanted to cost you on. See how that's twisting? Okay, we need to make sure there is no twist in the flex line. Because if there is, then the, uh, any air in the line will go to the high spot. So always verify that that flex line is properly routed and straight. I'm going to slide that over. It should slide on real easy now since the piston's already pushed in. Start these two bolts by hand. Perfect. Now I'll get my air ratchet. 14 millimeter. Make sure it's going the right way. When I tightened that uh, bolt with the, with the air ratchet, I noticed that the pin was spinning. So they make it where you can put a wrench on there and then put a ratchet onto the bolt. And then you can make sure you get that bolt tightened properly uh, by pulling the pin with the wrench. Okay. So again, always pay attention to that kind of detail. So I always check to make sure my caliper slides properly 
and so this one is uh, I do hear a little noise that's coming from the little clip right here that's hitting the caliper there we go and you can hear it it snapped into place that little detail is the difference of, of, of a noise when it leaves versus no noise now I'm gonna slide that and now I'm very happy yeah Grab my lug nuts. I'm gonna start all of them by hand. Three to four turns. All right, so here's our torque specs. We keep it on our shelf in the middle here. I'm gonna look up a Toyota, which would be in the back. And I wanna check my torque spec for my uh, lug nuts. Sienna, uh, 2000, or 1998 to 2015, 97 foot pounds. Okay. So here's our torque sticks. I'm going to go until I find a 90 foot pound torque stick. I'm going to put that into my uh, flip socket, make sure that I'm on the 21 side, not the 22. Put that on my impact gun, flick my switch, and I'm going to run all these down first. Okay. I'm going to bring it down. Alright, we're ready now. They're all ran down snug. Now let's go tight. Five hammers. Or five seconds. What I don't want to see is that. Five seconds. Yep. So I'm going to run my torque wrench up till I get to 90. So one full turn of this handle brings it up. Uh, 10 foot pounds so we're at right now we're at 90 and it's 97 now that's the maximum uh, amount um, so I'm good with that I've moved it to 7 and we're on a 90 I want to go down now and I'm going to put that on and go torque in the start pattern push and click once when it clicks then you're done And you don't want to jerk it, just a steady pull. Okay, I'm happy. All right, we're going to show you another way to push the caliper piston in, but it involves breaking the bleed screw uh, back uh, off. So uh, this is the bleed screw. So when I push the piston in, I'm going to have the fluid squirt out. There's different wrenches you could use for this. So these are bleed wrenches. So the bleed wrenches are a great way to not strip the bleed screws. I'm gonna break it free. Uh, another wrench you could have used is a flare nut or tubing wrench. Uh, so anything that has a brass fitting like this, uh, you wanna use the proper tool to break that free. So those are the bleed wrenches. And all I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go underneath here and I'm gonna hammer a screwdriver into where the pads are right right inside here it will, it will damage and you can see the fluid coming out so i'm going to lock it and i'm going to hit this in and then all i'm going to do is open the bleed screw and i'm going to just push that piston all the way inside and let the fluid just leak out once when you get to the bottom don't release the pressure until you tighten that uh, bleed screw. All right, as you're pushing that piston in, before you ever release the pressure on the screwdriver, you need to make sure that bleed screw is snug. And I always say pinky tight, pinky tight. If you get a wrench on here and I see you torquing like this, you're gonna ruin the threads. All you need is your pinky snug. That's all the strength you need to tighten that bleed screw. So once when I have that bleed screw tight, I can go ahead and release this and no air is going to be sucked back inside the hydraulic system. I have showed you several ways to push a caliper piston in. Uh, they make these other tools. You could just, some caliper pistons have to be twisted as you uh, push them in. So not only do you push them in, but they must be screwed in or twisted. And these are the rear calipers. They, the block right here is a special tool for that or they make these special caliper kit, uh, kits, so that way it presses and, and turns the caliper piston at the same time. Another tool that's available also is uh, a uh, just a simple uh, tool you slide into the caliper and you, and you spin it. 
uh, turn it with the knob and it pushes the piston in. Unfortunately, this is only good for one piston. You, there is variations where you could use like a uh, uh, more like a vice type uh, apparatus to push uh, the pistons in. Um, you can also just use a regular C clamp. So a C clamp is it works great. So you could just put a regular C clamp on there and push the piston in that way as well. There's so many options on how to push the piston in. Um, so it's all a matter what you're comfortable with. So we're on the other side now and I want to take this caliper off and I put my air ratchet on. And you see what I was talking about, this one adapter, uh, the, the pin right here spinning. So that's why you got to use a wrench. And then you could take that off. Now keep in mind, I don't want to take this all the way off until I do the top one. And this one I don't seem to have a problem with, so. Uh, yep, I do actually. So I'm gonna put this on there. Let's get that wrench on. Got that one. Got that one. And we're ready. Pro cut hanger. I'm gonna hook that onto my caliper. I'm going to put that all the way up. The big thing I worry about with these is students leave the bungee cord or leave these on the car. They unhook the caliper and the car drives away with these hanging and they got a noise. You got to always remember to take off the bungee cord or the special adapter. Okay. Uh, Mr. Lear and myself who are making this video feel like it would be an injustice if we didn't talk about uh, minimum thickness in a rotor. So we have the computer here in the shop. We're using Pro Demand to look up the vehicle specifications. So we're gonna look up a 2006 Toyota Sienna. It's a LE. It's a front wheel drive, not an all wheel drive. Use this vehicle. Now we can go to common specs to find like the rotor and, uh, and the torque specs and all that. So we have disc brake, uh, a service data so we can just click that and this gives us all our information we need for uh, uh, for the disc brakes so it gives you pad thickness uh, here's what we really need which is the front brake disc thickness so standard which means a brand new rotor is one inch and 102 thousandths um, we can machine that down to one 0 0.024 or one inch and 24 thousandths. So we have 80 thousandths that we could take off of this rotor before we had to throw it away. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and grab this vernier caliper. I'm gonna measure this uh, rotor right now, okay? So I need to make sure I don't measure the rust part. You need to be, the thinnest part of the rotor is right in the middle here. And the other thing we forgot to mention on the other side is, uh, the last person that did a brake job uh, must have had a chattering sound or a ringing sound when they machined it. And you could see this pattern right here and that's from noise when you're machining. So we're gonna make sure we're, the jaws are already closed. We're at zero. We're gonna expand this out and we're gonna put this on and then we're gonna read it, okay? So the raised one right here means one inch. The next one is, uh, 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 it's uh, tenths. And then the numbers that you see here, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, all the way to uh, 90 is uh, hundreds. And the thousands are the notches. So based on what I'm seeing here, and I want to make sure that I'm below the rust. I'm seeing technically it looks like we're not at the one, uh, the, the second, we're at the one inch. So one inch, and you just read this as a number, and it looks like one inch and uh, 95 thousandths. So we're in spec, the uh, throwaway spec is one inch and 24 thousandths. So if we were to mach over machine this, and we actually got to where it, when we put it back on and we're right at around 24 thousands, 25 thousands right here, we're too, we would be too small. So there's 24 right there. That would be too small and we need to throw it away. So we have all this to machine. We have our uh, hub mounted to the rotor and now we're ready to machine the other side. The brakes are off. The caliper mounts on the front 
So notice where the head's at right here. So first off, before I flip it, I'm gonna go ahead and, and take that brush that we have. And I wanna work with a clean uh, head. So I'm gonna make sure I get all that metal off before I get in the position, okay? That's why we have this brush. And now I need, I need to flip this machine upside down. The nice thing about the machine is once when you set it up on the other side, then it's set up for this side. The only thing I need to do is back off the bits a couple uh, notches, push them out, and I don't need to slide it, and I don't need to move it back and forth. And all I have to do is spin this, and always the motor needs to go over the top, okay? That's the primary rule. The motor needs to go over the top, we spin it, and now we're ready to attach this to the car. I'm gonna slide this in. Remember, you could tilt it, so I'm gonna tilt it up. I need to spin it so that way it locks into place right there. And then it should just be a simple matter of a, a tightening this nut. Let's see, I'm not quite level yet. There we go. And look how easy that spins in. Okay, we're good. Now I bring my bits in and they should be automatically centered and just slip right over the rotor just like it's supposed to. So the big mistake students make is they reposition the head and look, it's set perfectly. So now we turn our machine on. So I'll make sure this is locked. I'm turn my machine on. And then I'm gonna hit start. And then the magic number we wanna see is 0.8. And now remember it's upside down. So we wanna see 0.8. There we go, 0.7, and I didn't talk about this on the other side. If it has two green lights, we're ready to cut, okay? So we're good, we can go ahead and cut this rotor. So I got this on the edge, so now I'm gonna have, I always recommend you get down on your knees. The inner bit you wanna tighten first because you're gonna go by sound. There we go, I hit. The outer bit you could see, but you wanna be on your knees so that way you can look inside if you have to. And now I can go ahead and bring this in. But before I bring it in, I'm gonna lock this lever right here. And now I'm gonna bring this all the way in. Looking to see if the rotor gets thicker. Slow down when I get to that rust, that inner lip. And then take that inner lip off on both sides. There we go. Okay, get my uh, brake pad ready to install. Right here. I'm gonna loosen this. I'm gonna go, here's a notch. I'm gonna go three notches tight. One, two, three. And the inside, one, two, three. And then I'm gonna lock this bit down. And then I'm gonna hit that button. I just noticed I didn't uh, position the catch for the uh, shaving. So if you see that, this is movable so you can get all the shavings from going on the ground. Okay, we got our machining done. Uh, we do need to do a non-directional finish real quick. So I'm gonna take a piece of uh, emery cloth again and I'm gonna put that on the rotor. Make sure my fingers don't get where I could uh, hurt my fingers. So it's a lot of room right here. And then I'm going to go on this side, flat palm, and you can see it changing it. I don't want to take a lot of metal off, just enough to change the direction, okay? Turn the machine off, and really nice finish. Um, I'm going to go ahead and grab my mic now. Get my mic now, I'm going to go ahead and expand this out. Put it over kind of the same place. I'm going to close it and uh, see what our measurement is. And it looks pretty exact. We were at 94 thousandths. And I took off uh, three notches is equal to seven thousandths. So subtracting 14 from 94 and we're right at uh, 80 thousandths. And we're above the rate, the large one over on the, on the slide bar. So we're at one inch and let's get it back to where we were. 
and 80 thousandths. So we took off 14 thousandths and we're still far away from 24 thousandths where we throw the rotor away. Kind of loosen that knob up now. I have the handle and the handle and the handle here. Slowly drag this off without hitting my uh, rotor. Then I'm gonna flip this back over. Okay, motor goes over the top. Bring that back over the top. One of the things that you always got to make sure before you start the car and drive away is that you have to pump the brake pedal because we move the piston all the way back and now the pads are away from the rotor and it typically takes about three pumps of the pedal to bring the pads up against the rotor where you're actually going to get some braking action. So here we go. I'm going to go ahead and pump three times. And you can see inside the caliper piston coming out and this whole assembly is is tightening up okay tell me when you have a good pedal all right so you could see right here the piston came out the ca the pad contacted the rotor on that side and on the other side and the caliper is now snug what we need to do on this side though is because we broke this bleed screw we need to bleed the air out if there was any in there so as a precautionary uh, measure, we're going to uh, do a quick uh, brake bleed. Mr. Lear's inside the car, but he's not in charge. The person with the wrench is the one in charge because he does not know if the bleed screw is tightened or loosened. So I'm going to give him the commands of pumping it up and then I'm going to tell him to hold it down. And that's all he's going to do. All right, so I'm going to come down to the brake, the brake caliper. I'm going to put the my my uh, tubing wrench or flare nut wrench on there all right mr lear go ahead and pump it up do that like three times okay. hold it hold it down and okay. and then i'm going to go ahead and open the bleed screw and it's going to come out and then i'm going to snug it with my pinky and we're, we'll do it again pump it up hold it down okay. and then loosen and then tighten it with my pinky finger. And we're good, except the last thing we need to do is we need to clean this off with water. So let me go get that. So you don't wanna leave this uh, brake fluid residue anywhere on the brakes or on the ground. And all you do is just go ahead and clean it with simple water. Rinse it with plenty of water. You could see it kind of a, a cloudy, milky substance. The key word here for uh, science is uh, hydroscopic. Uh, it means that it absorbs water. So it's water soluble. So you could just rinse off the brake fluid with plain old water and it will uh, be completely removed. So we took fluid out. You could see the fluid right here when I shake it in the master cylinder. Uh, because we pushed the pistons all the way back in for the new uh, pads, we're right at the max level right there. So we're actually uh, pretty good with our uh, fluid. Okay, so I don't need to add any more fluid to our master cylinder. So I could uh, go ahead, put this cap on, close the hood. We have one tire to install, which we won't video because you, we've already covered how to torque a lug nut. So we are done with this official video.